G'day, my name is Paul Telling and I'm from uh, youreventillustrator.com.au or Gig Graphics and I've been asked to provide to you guys um, some quick uh, scribing tips. So what I'd like to do for you, uh, I want you to be able to go straight into work and use the tips that I'm going to give you. So I'm going to give you a, a couple of tips on how to write on the, right, on the whiteboard um, and then I'll show you how to model. We're going to do this as quick as we can because I want to allow you guys to get straight to work. So we'll start with lettering. A few basic principles. Um, break your letters down into brush strokes. So it's like doing calligraphy. You want to break it down into the simpler shapes and that way you'll get uniformity and um, it'll be easier to read and easier to manage. So what I like to do is I break the letters down, we'll start with the letter A, um, break it down into the three different strokes. After each stroke you're lifting your hand off the page um, and going back on for the next stroke. The reason we do that because if we keep our, our um, hands on the board we can end up with some really messy writing. But if I Make sure my pen comes off the board after each letter and after each stroke of each letter. It, um, you get good space in between the letters. There's a lot of white space. It's really easy to read. So break your letters down into strokes. Keep your pen off the board between strokes and space out your letters a little bit so that it's really easy to read. I also use uh, capital letters because it's easier to read on the whiteboard. Um, if you are going to use lowercase, just make sure you, you um, again, break it down into the key strokes and lift your pen off the board, whatever's most comfortable for you. Now it's a bit hard to see, but if I was in front of a whiteboard, you want to follow your letters along the board because as you do that, it means that your, um, you don't stretch and slowly go up to one side or down to another. So if you stay with the board and what you, where you're writing um, in front of you um, and that level with you, so you go, go up or down with the letters, that way you'll keep uniform and you won't go skew if and uh, all over the place. So basic lettering. To do block lettering, again, break it down into the simple strokes and um, build your letters up. Like so. Which ends up being, if you just imagine the outer edge of those two objects. So really you're just thickening up your current letters. So that's lettering. The thing that's really going to help you here in um, the work that you're doing is being able to model what you want to say um, graphically. It's a much better way of understanding what's being said and um, like they say a picture is worth a thousand words so if you can clearly articulate it in a model anyone can understand it. So there's when I'm going to teach you stra strategic modeling which others call graphic modeling and there's a few key elements to that. And then when you put them all together, you can really um, use it to uh, define any um, problem or any story. Um, it's just a matter of practicing and getting used to it. This way also you can use, uh, you don't have to be a perfect drawer or an artist to be able to use this form of graphic modeling. So the elements for a graphic model are, um, there's frames, there's annotations, there's actors, uh, and relationships. And usually you like to put a title on the uh, on the model that you're creating. So the title is exactly that. What is the model of? Frames, this is a way that you can break up your model. 
So frames show you what's in and what's out. It also can be used to show relationships and when we start to use them you'll understand them more. Um, annotations, so yeah it's great to draw a whole bunch of blobs and pictures and triangles but what do each one of those triangles mean and then what do each of those frames mean? It's just so annotations are literally adding text to your diagram to give it more clarity. Actors, so actors are the players in the model, the players in what you are, what it is you are modeling. Uh, these can be people, these can be objects, they can be systems, um, and they can be drawn any way. You could, I mean, an actor can simply be a circle or it could be just a blob. And then once you annotate that, you can say that's Bill. And that's Bill's ball. And that's where you start to see the clarity. And then relationships. So this is how the actors and the frames all relate to each other. Relationship can be shown through size, it can be shown through overlapping frames or the uh, distinction between frames. Um, it can be shown by how things are grouped or put together, the spacing across the model. So um, it can be used, uh, you can use the arrows. Uh, there's so many different ways that you can show relationships. Um, you know, the classic is the, you've got the Venn diagram and you know, this is X, this is Y and this is where X and Y intersect and it usually you know, can mean the com combination of the two. Um, so this could be eggs and that could be bacon in the middle means breakfast, for example. Um, so what I'd like to do for you to, so you can understand this clearly is I'm just gonna draw a model. It's trying to think of something to do and I've decided that I'm gonna do um, Star Wars and uh, a Star Wars family, I'm gonna call it. So hopefully you've all watched Star Wars and you understand what I'm talking about. Um, if not, have a look at the model and then go watch Star Wars and tell me whether I'm wrong or right or whether it makes sense or draw the model of what you think uh, Star Wars should be. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a, a frame to put this model in and I'm gonna call this the Star Wars Now the, there's a few actors in my um, my model. There he is, Darth Vader. So um, you can just use simple shapes to represent that. There's going to be uh, Luke Skywalker. And then uh, there's going to be Princess Leia. So at the moment you're wondering, you know, if you just saw this model, you're like, oh, I don't understand it. So what I'll do is I'll annotate these objects. So this is Luke Skywalker. And this is Darth Vader. Or as some of you may know, Anakin Skywalker. And then this is Princess Leia. Not an Uber fan, so I hope that's how it's spelled. Um, so at the moment, yes, they're related. They're all, um, as you can see, they're all part of the Star Wars family. Um, but if we were to say exactly what this is, it's actually, they're all related in the Skywalker family. So we're just drawing another frame to represent that. So what we could do is we could have uh, Yoda. And 
his family, and that could be another Star Wars family. So you can have frames within frames to represent uh, the relationships now. I think they they inter interact. So Yoda's family, if they I don't even know <laughs> what his family is, would not overlap with um, the Skywalker family because they haven't made it. But if they had a child. I have no idea what that would look like, but that you know could be in here to represent the Yoda Walker family or baby. So there's your sort of classic Venn diagram. Now another thing that we can do here is we can go, okay, well, Darth Vader is is all on the dark side of the force. So that's the dark side in here. Now, although they don't really say it, the Princess Leia still has a connection to the force and the lighter side of the force. Um, so we could just say that everything outside of here is the light side of the force. Because everyone outside of that area, every one outside the box that is the dark side is uh, is part of the light side of the force. So we've got actors, we've got Princess Leia, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker and Yoda and his family. We have annotations, we've annotated every part of the model so far. We have frames, we have the dark side, we have the Skywalker family, the Yoda family, we have the Star Wars family and we have relationships so we can see that um, these guys are all related in one family um, if they had a baby, the baby would, could be called Yoda Walker. Um, they're all part of the Star Wars family. Um, what we could also do is show that um, there is love going back and forth, even though they they hate each other at times still love towards so just through simple arrows and symbols we can show that they all love each other so as you can see as it builds you can get quite complex and then you can think about other ways of drawing it and laying it out so that it makes uh, better sense another thing that is cool is frames remember frames show what's in and what's out so what you could do is you could draw hands that Darth Vader and uh, Luke Skywalker and you could actually you know, get rid of one because outside it all um, is Darth Vader's and Luke's hands because they lose them in the, in the film. They each ch chop each other's hand off in the film. So there you go. So that's uh, Luke's and this is Anakin's. So I hope that helps. I uh, hope that helps you um, with your work today. Uh, remember title, frames, annotations, actors and relationships. Some tips there for how to uh, draw your letters. Um, I think they'll do for you right now. I don't want to give you too much or overload you. You need to get to work. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please go to www.youreventillustrator.com.au and uh, check out some videos, sign up and um, get some more information on uh, illustrating and illustrating events and um, conversations. So thanks very much for watching. I've been Paul Telling and uh, have a great day. See ya.